you are invited to follow in after them outside. And when the casket has been loaded and the coach door closed, it will dry away. And you are then invited to come back inside, downstairs, to the Elizabeth room for a time of reception and of warm remembrance of Don's life. Let us worship. Spirit of life, Spirit of life, we are the people who once feared death. We kneel down trembling before the grave. But this day we no longer fear death, for Christ has grappled with death and broken its victory. Christ is victor. Christ is King. Christ is Lord of all. Friends, we are drawn here today because we are people with tender hearts. That's the way that God made us. And with those tender hearts, we reach out with love and goodness to the people around us, and we live in good relationship with them. Those tender hearts bring us so much love and so much joy. And yet in the end, those tender hearts often bring us sadness and sorrow. If it were not for the tenderness of heart, we wouldn't even know what bereavement meant. If it were not for the tenderness of heart, we would not know what grief was. And yet we continue to love. And we would not trade those tender hearts for all the universe. In spite of the pain, we know that only in love are we truly alive. Only in the tenderness of heart are we truly human. We are here today because our tender hearts are broken by the death of John Spencer. He filled our lives with joy and goodness, laughter and kindness. With a childlike curiosity and enthusiasm, God's light shined in him in many ways. And now that his earthly life is over, we struggle. We lean upon God seeking help and strength. We lean upon God seeking God's blessing and comfort. But we're not here just to mourn. We're also here to recognize that Don's life was truly a blessing, a celebration, a rich life filled with every good thing. We are also here to lay claim to the promise of Jesus who said, Whoever believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never let us pray. Holy God, when death comes close to us, we remember again how precious life is, and we recognize again that we have not valued it sufficiently. Holy God, forgive us if we have acted in ways that cause hurt to others. We seek your forgiveness. If we have spoken in ways that cause pain to others, we ask that you would forgive us. If there have been times when we were going to do something good and loving, but we were going to do it tomorrow, now we realize that sometimes, in a sense, there is no tomorrow. Forgive us. If ever we were going to speak words of love and tenderness, but we held them back because we thought that they might embarrass us or make us feel vulnerable, forgive us. And give us the wisdom to forgive others and the courage to forgive even ourselves. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying to him, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing the praises of God with King number 11 in the dark blue hymnal in the pew, The Lord's My Shepherd, and if you are able, I invite you to sing. to you from Scripture and firstly from Psalm 121. Listen for the Word of God. I will lift up mine eyes under the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. 
The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this day forth and even forevermore. And from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual which is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. May the Lord God bless unto us this reading from his word, and to his name be praise and glory now and forever. Amen. On the front of the bulletin is a beautiful picture of Don at the helm of his 41-foot sailing boat, uh, and one of his songs uh, in his request list was hymn 325, uh, Eternal Father, strong to save, of course, the official song of the Royal Navy. Uh, let's sing that uh, to God's glory and remembering dawn.
let us pray. Holy and merciful God, let your healing word come to these people now through me, or if the need be, then in spite of me. For Christ's sake, amen. To all of you who are grieving the death of John Donald, Don Spencer, I extend the assurance of my prayers for you. God bless you. God give you help and strength. And in particular, I extend my prayers to Don's family, uh, to Jack and to Phil and Mary and to Mary and George and to the grandchildren, Ryan, uh, Craig and Sarah, Ian and Brandy, Matthew and Laura, to the great-grandchildren, Richard, Robert, Lee, William, and Olivia, and to Viva Park, uh, and Park Riley and Dorothy Duxbury. God bless you. God give you healing and strength. I'm really thankful to you, Phil, because you shared with me wonderful information and beautiful stories about your dad's life. And some of those things I knew, but a lot of them were just uh, exciting to hear uh, about your dad's life, and I'm going to share some of those. So thank you for your thoughtfulness uh, in sharing with me. I believe that God's light shines in all people, uh, and not just in ways that are religious or churchy. God's light shines in the ways in which we receive and enjoy God's gift of life, in the ways in which we serve humankind with our work, in the ways in which we love our families and care for the people around us. And that light shined brightly in Don Spencer's life. Let me first say a few things about his early days and his work. Uh, Don was born February the 5th, 1920, in beautiful Port Colborne, Ontario, down on Lake Erie. Uh, his dad, John, worked at Inco, except for the time that he was uh, in the Air Force for both the First and the Second World Wars. After school in Port Colborne, Don went on to Queen's University and earned his Bachelor of Science degree on May the 20th, 1944, and then after two years of hard work, earned his professional engineer's designation July the 19th, 1946. And I think Phil still has the registration papers with the number on them, and this is so beautiful. Uh, Don's engineering registration number is 1,623. Uh, and if you consider that today, there are about 490,000 persons registered. You get the idea that Don was in pretty close to the beginning, and that's absolutely amazing. He would work for Buffalo Forge, but here in Kitchener with a crew of other engineers uh, supplying and maintaining pumps, fans, and air quality products uh, to many different businesses, uh, including mining, automotive, tire, pulp, and paper. Uh, and of course, a lot of that was troubleshooting and repair, and Don just loved to solve problems. Uh, and I know in conversations I had had with him, uh, his proudest moments were those times when there was a big old fan vibrating down in a mine, and nobody knew what to do. But they called Don, and he said, well, you know, it's this and it's this. Uh, and he just took such joy in being able to make things work right again. But his life was much more than a life of tremendously productive work. His life was filled with meaningful endeavors with and around his family. Uh, the first thing, of course, he took that engineering skill and applied it to the beautiful cottage down on Lake Erie, uh, building retaining walls and doing all that was needed for its maintenance. Uh, he also had a wonderful enthusiasm for photography, which he used to visually record the great events of his life to be remembered and cherished later, and he passed that along to Jack, 
who took that skill even further into higher levels. Growing up down on Lake Erie made it uh, necessary, or at least ideal, uh, to get into boating. Uh, Don's father had a boat, uh, but when Don grew up, he had to have an even better boat, and so his first boat was a cedar strip and mahogany boat, which, of course, as an engineer, Don completely disassembled and rebuilt and put back on the water in such perfect condition, it was like a piece of furniture. Um, when he first put it back into the water, though it looked perfect, I'm not sure whether he had overlooked this fact or whether he was just really impatient, uh, but he did not uh, swell the boat or soak the boat first, and a wooden boat has to be swelled. So when he first took it out, uh, it leaked terribly. Uh, that did not stop him. I think, Jack, you were with him on that inaugural <laughs> voyage. Uh, and, and he took the boat out taking on water, and, and he kept it out as long as possible, uh, only getting it back up onto the trailer moments before it was going to sink. Um, well, that's the way that Don was, right? Later, the family would own four other power boats and seven sailboats, uh, apparently none of which leaked like that first one. But of course, uh, the picture on the front of the bulletin is Don at the helm of the CNC 41, and he loved that. And he found wonderful joy out on the water with that boat. Many of his greatest memories are around the cottage that firstly had belonged to uh, his Aunt Lou. Uh, she had purchased it in 1924. Don and Shirley purchased it in 1958. Uh, Don undertook to rebuild everything on it, right up to the point where he tore it down in 1970 and built a new cottage uh, carefully calculated to all of his particular needs, right down to the mahogany trim stained in walnut. And that property continues to be beautiful. There were many other aspects of life that Don enjoyed many other ways in which he found pleasure in God's gift of life. He and Shirley enjoyed golfing at the Conestoga Golf Club, and of course they had a second set of clubs uh, stored at the cottage to be used at the Whiskey Run course. They enjoyed trips to Florida, games of bridge with close friends that Don had made back in university and retained as friends throughout his life. He had a passion for flight, building many balsa and tissue wind-up airplanes as a child, and then as he grew, uh, moving into radio-controlled aircraft. I love the story about his 1939 Indian motorcycle, and I can just imagine Don driving that thing. Um, and I have to tell you, Don has had at least two accidents with his motorcycle. Uh, one in which the bumper of a car hooked in to his bike and spun him around, uh, and the other was a wipeout on a gravel road, uh, no less with Shirley on board with him. Uh, I'm sure your mom was really impressed with that. Both Don and Shirley loved music. They had an upright grand piano and a Hammond organ. The Hammond would eventually go to the cottage and be placed with a, replaced with a giant-sized Baldwin theater organ. Uh, and I remember listening to Don playing that in his house uh, until the whole house was shaking and Don was laughing with joy. Um, now, he took that up to Laurelwood as well, and, and I'm not exactly sure how the people in the neighboring rooms responded when Don started to crank that thing up. Um, and then it came here, and, and, and we actually couldn't use it, but I don't know if I ever told you, we did find a church um, a little ways north that needed it, and, and it is still in operation as a church organ today, so I, I hope you take some comfort in knowing that. So many things that Don Spencer loved, and 
even up until he was 97, Don could still get the sparkle in his eyes and that look of joyful enthusiasm and curiosity that you would normally associate with a 10-year-old child. And yes, we remember that when he was really excited about something that was going to happen, Don would say, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And I hope all of you, when you get to be 97, will still be saying, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, and still see life as a wonderful gift to be explored and enjoyed and relished. He had so many passions. You know, it's common when somebody has a passion that you put something in their casket that represents that passion. Now, I have to say, I have never seen a casket so loaded down as Don Spencer's. I, I have tried to take an inventory here to make sure it's all there. Uh, there's a camera lens, a key to the organ, uh, uh, digital calipers, a slide rule, uh, a badge for the Indian motorcycle, a brass compass, a pen from Canadian Blower and Forge, a golf ball, CDs of his favorite music, a photograph uh, of the CNC 41, uh, and a pin from the Sales Association. Maybe there was other, I don't know if I got. If, close. Okay, so I, I just, I, I pray that every person could enjoy life like Don did and find happiness and enthusiasm in so many things. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life abundantly, and part of the abundance of life is enjoying every good aspect of it. Beyond all these things, Don was a tremendously faithful man. His attendance and support here at St. Andrew's was extremely faithful and good. Of course, his love for the music program, his love for, where did Doug, oh, there's Doug, his love for Douglas and for the organ music here was just overwhelming. He would fill up with joy at the thought of hearing Douglas play. He was proud of his family. He boasted about his children. I hope that you all know that. <laughs> He boasted about his grandchildren, and he was filled with joy for the great-grandchildren. He had a wonderful capacity for making friends and keeping them. Uh, Lucy Graves from Winston Park sent me a note saying that he would talk to anybody, anywhere, anytime, and show interest and care for that person and develop a connection with them right up to the last days of his life. His life was marked by wonderful humor, and I pray that all of the family will cherish that and keep it and continue it through the generations. You've seen him suffer. I pray you know that in the life which is to come, there is no suffering. All tears and pain are wiped away, and there is only joy and goodness and grace. I hope you'll all know that whatever good thing Don gave you is not taken away from you by death. Over such enthusiasm and laughter and joy and excitement and goodness that Don had, death has no dominion. I pray you'll all go out from here knowing that God is with you, that God's gift of life is good and wonderful, and that you will live with an awareness of God's presence at all times. When Jesus had to leave his disciples, their hearts were broken. So Jesus said to them, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going now, but if I go, I shall return again and bring you unto myself, 
And where I am going, you know. And the way, you know. I am the way and the truth and the life, saith the Lord. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Let us pray. Holy God, look in tender mercy on these your children, now grieving the death of Don Spencer. Let them be healed by the presence of your spirit. Let them have hope in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, through which you promise us life eternal. Let these people go out from here not as persons broken by death, but persons lifted up by Christ's promise of life eternal. For his name's sake, amen. And now, at the request of Don Spencer, his favorite singer, Bill Cran. Thanks, Bill. Don is smiling in heaven, uh, as he will be when Douglas plays the postlude today uh, at Don's request. Uh, I invite you now to stand for a brief uh, committal. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
For as much as Almighty God has received unto himself his faithful servant Don, now departed, we therefore commit his remains to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to life eternal, by the grace of Christ our Savior. Amen. And let's close the service by singing the hymn 479, The Church's One Foundation, 479.
in peace, you are free people. Go in the power of the resurrected Savior, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.